ALG really saved me. I put all of my success on joining this group. People constantly checking in saved me. I made so many like friends with people that I've never met, but I feel incredibly close to and, and I consider them family. It really is a family. It is a place where you can just be yourself and there is no judgment. There is no shame. You are so welcome there. Nobody has to be in this alone. Everybody is either going through or has gone through the same thing at one point. Let's do this. Welcome back to the ALG podcast. If you're listening to this on the day of drop, then happy Friday to you. Really quick at the top of the show, guys, if you could five star rate and review the podcast we really appreciate it we love seeing those far five star ratings and we want to read more reviews so please leave us some reviews so david has something to do during his day because we all know he doesn't do anything during the day to count his money um guys the podcast this week as always is sponsored by redcon one for the highest state of readiness you can use redcon one promo code t20 jarps at Check out for 20% off your whole order. That's T20JARPS. And I think that's all the commercial we have for you this week, David. Are you ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble, but I want to share something with you that I haven't told you yet. Did you know we're number sixth in mental health in Cyprus and we're number 19th in health and fitness in Cyprus? Well, shout out to Cyprus. Cyprus, Cyprus likes us. I'm just, just putting it out there. We're, we're, we're over in Cyprus. <laughs> I would if just like, I was going through the numbers. Where Cyprus is on the map. Uh, isn't Cyprus by it Italy? Is. No. Isn't Cyprus by Italy? The Mediterranean no. kind of vibe? I thought it was by Egypt. Egypt? I, okay, so that general area. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you could DM us and let us know where Cyprus, Cyprus is, is, David will, will Venmo you $2. <laughs> That's funny. Well, so this episode, I'm super looking forward to it because it's it's a it's a fun one because it's I get to I get to have you're you're getting to dive into the pool, which is prep. You're diving into the pool, which is doing a competition. Yeah, man. And obviously, you have how many months till your competition day? I am ten weeks out as of today. So for those that don't know, I am competing in the summer shredding uh, transformation category group thing i'll be on stage uh at alpha land in missouri city texas yay and what was that october 30th 2021 bring your family bring the kids you're doing prep and prep first and foremost i I always find it so interesting because there's so many protocols everyone has their own little spiel Mm -hmm. um what uh, I'm, i'm assuming you're using steve correct yeah yeah, okay. So I'm using Steve for everything. Okay. What has been your protocol to start? Like what, how do you know the nitty gritty or he just texts you what to eat, when to eat and how to eat it? No, I do not know the nitty gritty. I don't want to know the nitty gritty. Um, if you've been following my journey, obviously you're listening to this podcast. Um, I am not one to really dive deep into macros, counting calories. I've kind of just been brainwashed by Steve over the last say, almost six years on what to eat, what not to eat, and when to eat. And some people look at that as like a bad thing. I look at it as uh, he helped me reshape my whole lifestyle. And like, I don't text him. Like if I wasn't on prep right now, I wouldn't text him and be like, hey bud, like I'm going out to dinner with my family and I want to know what I could eat. Well, like I have a basic of like knowledge of what I can eat, how much to eat and yada, yada, yada. But um, yeah, so I he makes a meal plan for me. He started a meal plan for me when we started this. And uh, now is actually the first time that we're slightly adjusting it. So, uh, yeah. Okay. And what is the basics? Like, kind of fill me in on that. What, what's your, like, what's a week look like or a day look like? Every day, seven days a week, I'm eating nothing but chicken and rice and broccoli. Yay. And protein shakes. Okay. What, um, do you happen to know, is your stuff? Pr- uh, oh, no, no. I weigh what's, everything out. You weigh everything. Okay. So yeah, what, yeah, 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 yeah. what are you doing? So I'm doing roughly six ounces of grilled chicken. Um, I am right now doing eight, uh, eight ounces of white rice and about two and a half to three ounces of broccoli. Now, mind you, for those that are listening, I know that you're thinking to yourself, my God, that is a lot of food, especially for a bariatric patient. One, 
I am six years post op. Well, five years, five years post op, almost six yeah. post op. I am six foot five. Okay. And I started at 510 pounds. So my body function, like I talked about this with my bariatric doctor before I got the surgery done, my body will naturally take in a little bit more calories, a little bit more density than someone else who is in the same shoes that I am starting out at a smaller height, smaller starting weight, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is the most amount of carbs that I've eaten ever in six years. I will say that soup to nuts. I'm eating a lot of carbs right now. Hmm. Yeah. And okay. And then how many meals a day? I am eating three solid meals a day and two shakes a day. Okay. And how, what are the shakes like? Shakes are two scoops of isolate whey, whey isolate. 24, uh, 24 grams per scoop. Yeah. Roughly protein. Okay. Yeah. So um, okay. and then, um, post-workout, what it was was post-workout was almond milk. Now I'm switching to water post-workout. So both will be made with water. Um, and that that's my eating every single okay. day and a gallon of water. So yeah, that first and foremost, I find it so fascinating because I was just having this conversation with Ryan. Um, Ryan hit me up, was asking questions about nutrition and stuff. And obviously I've had more experience in the last few months of coaching when it comes to navigating the waters of bariatric patients and like okay here's the goal of the You're macros <laughs> here's here's the goal of the of how nutrition works yeah. of like of okay so we're trying to hit some decent macros we're mm -hmm. obviously this idea of like the perfect percentages is garbage Absolutely. Um, if you, if you're 38% carbs, then you're going to gain fat. But if you're 32%, you're fine. It's like, Oh, shut up. Um, but it's been super interesting. Like when Ryan hits me up or whoever it, and, uh, was asking questions and they're like, I'm really having trouble putting down say four ounces, four or five ounces. And it's hysterical to me because th this is going to be crazy. My average meal, now I, I do relative intermittent fasting. My first meal is at noon. Um, I do 12 ounces of chicken with, right. four, with, four, ounces of, with four ounces of rice. Mm -hmm. And like the idea of like you or, or someone, someone's got to eating 12 ounces of chicken, you're out of your mind. <laughs> and so it's so interesting. Like, how do you go about kind of that kind of that pivot? Absolutely. Okay. And then has the, has the would you say you're eating the same amount more or less food than I would on a regular basis. Yeah. I'm probably eating around the same amount, like total amount of food than I normally would. The only thing is I've, I've replaced a lot of what would have been protein intake with carb intake. So yeah. I can, I can eat a lot of protein, which is a lot different from your standard bariatric patient. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with more dense proteins like uh, steak and so a lot of people who struggle with chicken, um, I get a lot of steak and chicken. You know, if I really wanted to, I could, I could kill a tomahawk steak. Mm, not a problem. Interesting. Okay. Um, but then I don't load up on anything on the side, like no vegetable, no, no carb, no nothing. Like if that's what I want, then I'm just having a protein. Gotcha. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. hundred percent. And then, um, what's your workout schedule like? I am currently working out. I'm about to start four days a week, probably going to move it up to five soon. I'm doing an hour of cardio every single day, except for one. So I'm doing six days of, uh, of cardio an hour a day. Okay. And I'm lifting for probably an hour to an hour and a half a day. Okay. Four days a week for lifting. Yeah. Mm. So five, so six days a week for cardio, four days a week for lifting. Yeah. And how, how is that kind of working out for you so far? I love it. Like yeah, I, I absolutely adore working out. Um, before the pandemic hit, I was always working out. And then obviously it got a little weird when gym shut down and then we started doing rogue workouts in Steve's backyard. Um, the only time I really was never working out every single day was when I really first started wrestling training three years ago. Um, and the only reason why that was is because I was doing so much physical activity during wrestling that I just couldn't, I couldn't fit it into my day to, you know, have another lift. Yep. So, so then, um, cause I always find this one interesting. Cause I mean, you're still, cause you haven't, nothing you're doing now is massively restrictive yet. Well, I'm about to cut my carbs this weekend. 
Okay. So I'm, I'm doing the next uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm doing absolutely no carbs, only six ounces of chicken and like two and a half to three ounces of broccoli. Okay. And then um, interesting because, because like my, my protocol, I mean, obviously I, I did it myself. I didn't have a coach. Right. Um, I, I, I had a good foundational understanding when you come, when it comes to macros, calories, what, what mm-hmm. I'm trying to do. Do I have the nitty gritty to probably win when you do? No, I don't, I don't have all that kind of stuff. Um, right. But it's so interesting. What, what's like a, for you going into the show, what is the goal? Like, is it, is it a number goal? Is it a look goal? Is it like, I, like, like, do you have a gen, did you kind of sit down with Steve and kind of walk through, all right, based upon where you're at body fat wise, based upon you should probably be around right. this weight or how was that process? I have, we really haven't put a number goal on it, to be honest with you. Um, you know, he said to me, you know, I really don't care if you lose weight during this prep. He was like, that's not really what I'm concerned about. It's for him. It's more about me putting on mass, uh, mm-hmm. muscle mass. Um, so that's kind of what he's been tossing around personally right now. I'm probably sitting around anywhere between 253 to 255, uh, you know, just depending on what time of day it is. I would personally like to cut maybe another 15 pounds or so that that's just for me. I want to yeah, see how 15 low pounds I can of body go. fat. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just want to see how low I can go um, without, you know, just being a walking zombie. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, there's no real like number goal here. There's, there's nothing. It's just, I want to, I want to put my body to the test because that's what this journey has always been about for me. Just like, I never was a guy who was like, I want to be a bodybuilder, mm-hmm. you know, bodybuilding was cool. I knew people that did bodybuilding, but at 510 pounds, bodybuilding was never in the cards for me. You yeah. know, there's no 510 pound bodybuilder. Debatable. Um, no, I'm just kidding. No, yeah. Um, wrestling was always my alley. You know, mm-hmm. that was always my gab. But a lot of wrestlers started out as pro bodybuilders. You know, you mm-hmm. have your Lex Luger's, your John Cena's. A lot of guys, a lot, a lot of guys started off as bodybuilders. So I knew eventually when I started this journey, like me and Steve said it when I first started going to the gym, like one day I would do some sort of show, whether it be a transformation show or, you know, classic physique show, whatever. Um, So right now, this is just a way to dip my toe in the water to see how much I like this Mm -hmm. uh, and to see what could possibly come next. You know, like, do I do I have the goal of winning? Um, I think that with any competition in the back of everyone's head, they have a goal of, you know, winning. That's why they started. But for me, it's not a make or break scenario. I'm honored to step on the stage with everyone who's participating in this competition. And I think that it is an amazing way to inspire and show people what is truly possible. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. And then, cause it's always, cause I did it so different when it comes to, um what i was just like because i i didn't go to it because you're, you're doing a transformation yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and uh and like being going to a location doing that whole bit is just a whole different mindset compared to um when i went about it and i'll be honest one of the biggest things that was a detriment to me that i don't, I don't think is in your car it's based upon what you're trying to do but correct me if i'm wrong uh i mean there was a point in time when I was about like six weeks out, I knew I was behind compared to where I wanted to be. And so I dropped down to like 1200 calories of basically straight protein and a little bit of fat, almost no carb. And I was on the treadmill for two hours a day, plus mm-hmm. lifting five to six days a week. I'm sure and we'll my, get there. my body was in shambles. Oh yeah. Like my hips were super tight. Um, it, it was pretty brutal. Are you, are you kind of just like, what's your general mindset going into this? It's like, I'm trying to ease my way in or I'm, I'm going to put in full force everything oh, I got. I, I've, to- I've been doing maximum effort. There's okay. no shortcut. There's no cheating. There's nothing, you know, I, I've enjoyed my alcohol. Um, but that's over. Like I had a few drinks for my birthday, but again, I only drink tequila. It's not like I'm out here drinking fucking sodas mixed with whiskey or yeah. chaser. You know what I mean? Or like, a bunch of beer. <laughs> right. Or a bunch of beer. So like for me, I've always, since I started this journey, I've just been keeping it really clean. 
you know? So it's not, it's not that hard for me, but I think I'm going to get to a point where like, you know, I'm going to have to go a little bit of the extra mile, Mm -hmm. but I'm balls to the walls right now. Um, My meals, like I described earlier, it's what I eat a day. Like that's it. Once that last meal goes in, you know, we're closed for business. Like there's no, there's no protein snacks. There's no jerky. There's no pork rinds. There's, you know, these are things that I love to eat on a daily basis that make me feel comfortable with my lifestyle where I don't feel like I'm giving up snacking. Well, right now I've, I've given up snacking. You know what I mean? Like I've given up those little fun things that I fit into my lifestyle because now I have a huge goal in front of me. Um, and I will not stop until I'm satisfied. And then how is that? Cause, cause like how, how many weeks are you in? About a month in. Okay. Month, month, month and week. Ha- has the restriction of getting rid of the different little little snacks and stuff gotten to you yet? Or is it is it so in your grind of like whatever it is, what it yeah, is? Yeah, no, it's just in my grind. See, that's um, I will say this is huge for me. Uh, and like this is I'm a huge proponent of this. And mm-hmm. I can say it in many different lights. Right. Um, we'll say it in this one, but it it can it can cross every barrier and everything which is this idea since you're on a diet or you're doing something more restrictive or you're doing something that's not necessarily fun or, or all this kind of stuff, stuff stressful and allows you to justify being an asshole. And it's like, sorry, I'm on prep. And it gives you somehow a green light to be a dick. Right. It's like, no, that's not how this works. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> But it, it's funny because like, I thought at first I'd be like, you know, really miserable with the fact that I, you know, I can't have my protein snacks and shit like that. But I'm also a really sick fuck when it, when it comes to like doing stuff like this. Cause like first or second week of prep, I went to Atlantic city. My family's eating at all these amazing restaurants doing all, you know, eating like animals. And I'm sitting there with my meal prep, you know, yeah, like, and there. I put my, in my those, I purposely put myself in those situations to test my discipline. Mm -hmm. Like I tell myself, if you can get out of the next three days, you can do anything. Mm -hmm. And I told myself that when I had bariatric surgery, before I had bariatric surgery and I was just losing weight on my own because, you know, I lost 88 pounds before I even decided to have bariatric surgery. Mm -hmm. But when I had bariatric surgery, I had bariatric surgery the week before Thanksgiving, which is a month before Christmas. You know what I mean? So like, I put myself in the hot water to test myself because I need to know I'm the type of person that if I do something that extreme, I need to know, am I going to actually do it or am I going to let myself down? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not letting anybody else down. And and that's what a lot of people need to understand, especially if you're starting a weight loss journey or anything else like that. Don't worry about letting everyone else down. You have to worry about letting yourself down Mm -hmm. because disappointing others and then disappointing yourself is two different feelings all of the time. Not some of the time. Like, I hate letting myself down. That's like a real mental struggle for me. So I put myself in shark infested waters all the time, all the time. And that's where I think it is so important. Um, whatever that, that heart is or that stressor is where it's like, I think, and again, it's, it, it doesn't matter the, the lane. Obviously, we tend to talk about it through an obese lane, lens. Right. The same thing can be said for business. The same can be said Absolutely. for mm-hmm. becoming a doctor. The same can be said for anything that's fucking hard. Yeah. And you want to build confidence. You want to de- build self-reliance. You have to do things that are uncomfortable. Absolutely. And there's just, there's no way around it. Like that's where I think that where it is so interesting when people somehow believe that if I'm just happy all the time and things feel mm-hmm. good, somehow it's going to get you everything you want. And I I just think that's bullshit. There's certain things that are just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. You know, I, I totally get you there. So then, um, kind of as we're, as we're transitioning to, we'll definitely do one or two more check-ins. I think it's fun way to do the podcast too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd love to. We'll do some check-ins on this kind of process. Cause Mm -hmm. I would love to know as you kind of go through it, because I, I mean, well, for those that want to know, because I mean, we haven't even said this yet uh, from start date to now, I'm down about 17 and a half pounds. Oh, shit. OK. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So in three weeks, you're down 17 and a half pounds. Yeah. 
fuck five pounds a week let's go yeah why hello yeah and i and like so obviously i could see it in my own face i really can't see it anywhere else i see it in my face and i see just from working out a lot more and I, i'm having the best lifts of my life mm-hmm. like you add those carbs of my life mm-hmm. so like i see the progression in my shoulders my shoulders are rounding out like my arms are huge like i've always had big arms but my arms are like just permanent pump right now mm-hmm. all the time actually speaking of that this is a little tangent but it's it's so interesting so shoulder day is my favorite day like i hate I, shoulders I, I see i love shoulders I like, isn't it funny how like you love to do what you get compliments most on yeah i hate shoulders <laughs> i see i have i have nice round shoulders and everyone's like wow david and so like obviously I'm like i want to do shoulders all the time right yeah. And uh, I hate, I have small calves, so now I naturally don't want to do cats. <laughs> Absolutely. Even though I had an epic leg day today, put it out there. Did you? Uh, it was solid. I mean, I, I have leg day tomorrow. I did. Um, I, I mean, I vow, I did basically a pyramid set, and my final set was two reps of two eighty five squat, and I'm like, that's pretty fr- for for a bad knee for everything else. Yeah, and, man. And no pain. Mm-hmm. Um, I was really proud of that. I had the best leg day of my life last week. Nice. Like a most incredible, incredible. But the reason why I say that is I can't tell you why. It, it is fascinating how just certain things happen. My lateral delts right now on both sides are just destroyed for my shoulder workout yesterday. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I don't get it. I don't feel like I did that much more, that much different than I had in the past. But for some reason, they're just more sore than usual. <laughs> I understand. Totally get it. It's just, it's, it's just weird how like it's random occasions where boom, just more, you hit it different or whatever it is. And it mm-hmm. just kind of does it that way. So as we kind of wrap, wrap this one up, as you're just a couple weeks in, you're already down 15 plus pounds. Um, that's going really well. What hasn't been, you say you're tweaking up your plan. So what is you're tweaking your plan because you're just in a different stage or are you tweaking your plan because you're not getting some result that, that Steve was anticipating? No, uh, just into a different stage. Um, so the reason why from, you know, me and him talking, the reason why he upped my carb intake was to really jumpstart my metabolism. Okay. You know, cause he was just nervous that my metabolism, you know, has been running really low because of just the way that I normally eat. Um, and obviously I'm exercising a lot more now I'm lifting a lot more. I want to have heavier lifts. Um, so obviously we pumped carbs through the roof. So now, I want to pull the carbs out from under me for the next three days. And then I'm going to probably try uh, carb cycling for the first time. So I've never done okay. carb cycling before, but now we're probably going to carb, You're doing carb cycling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nice. we'll see. That and was right my now, start. That yeah. was my start. That was my first, my first nutrition plan at 400 plus pounds was carb cycling. Yeah. So we're probably going to right now, I think for like the next two weeks or so, we're just going to play the game of how my body reacts to certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I mean like the most important part of all this, not to be disgustingly gross or anything like that, but it's how your body digests food, how, how often you're going to the bathroom, if you're regular, Mm -hmm. whatnot. So that's a big problem that I've had since bariatric surgery. Even before that, I don't go to the bathroom as regular as everyone else does. Don't know why I just don't. So, um, I got to start shout out to Caleb. Got to start taking some Metamucil and I have to get, (laughs) I have to get my system roaring a little bit. So uh, I picked up some of those bad boys yesterday. Get some fiber. And uh, yeah, we're going to see how that, you know, reacts. Um, and see, I think it's so important to, to kind of convey to people that are listening. What, what we're talking about with prep, it's a different animal. It's yeah. a diff- like, like the idea, a couple different things. Number one. This is I, science. Like this is science. This is science. And this yeah. is a for different different levels of results require a different amount of, of, of accountability and, and plan right. like if you're just trying to live within 30 pounds of your ideal body weight and a healthy body it's pretty freaking schmoozed like right. it doesn't it's it's not you don't have to go nuts here that's Absolutely. that's what we talk about 90 percent of the time mm-hmm. however if you're trying to look like a Greek God with, with six pack abs and, and shredded arms and freaking striations in your butt cheeks. Like that takes a whole different level of sciencing the shit out of it. Like yes. 
being able to obviously there's calorie deficit, but there's also fats and, and being able yeah. to like being able to regulate how your cortisol and all this kind of stuff is because you, you start looking watery mm-hmm. and like, all, there's so many things inside of the competition prep that is just a different animal compared to just living in a healthy body. Absolutely. Like I know that the craziness has not even started yet. You are know, you, like, is Steve planning on doing any water regulation the last oh, week? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you are doing yeah. it. See, that, that, and that's where folks, it, marginally healthy. <laughs> I'm running this as if I was doing a classic physique. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, because when you do the, the, the water regulation shit, that's wild. Yeah. Like, it actually is. Like, when you, um, like, hyper, um, like, w- increase your water, um, to like two, three gallons. And then all of a sudden you go to on day three, Wednesday, you drop your water into like a half a gallon. And then Thursday, Friday, you have almost as little as you possibly can. And even if you're really ballsy, which is super dangerous, you start adding like a diuretic or something in there and you just sucks all the water out of you. It's crazy what that does to your skin. It's crazy what it does to I mean, that those last three days when you're doing the water stuff or uh, are, it's just super weird. I remember like that when you wake up the day of and like literally you're trying to drink as little water. So it's like a, a thimble. Like that's literally what you just, just to parch your mouth. Yeah. Um, because you're trying to keep as much water down it between your skin. So it really pops your muscles. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also we're going to see, so depending on how this, this cut of carbs goes this weekend, uh, we're also going to see if maybe on days that I'm cu- like not having carbs to implement more fats, you know, okay. so he wants to see how my body reacts with that. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. I'm looking That's forward what to kind of, kind of seeing how that goes. Yeah. I, I, appreciate gonna, it. I think I'm going to compete again next year. Um, I just have a lot of stuff we talked about. I have a lot of stuff that's having this fall yeah. and I'm like, I just couldn't, I, I just can't swing it. You know, what's going to happen. I know exactly what's going to happen. I know what's going mean, to I'm saying for me, I'm going to fall in love with this because I am loving this so far. Yep. I'm going to fall in love with this. I'm going to compete again. I'm going to want to compete again. I'm going to do wrestling and my body's going to hurt and I'm going to be crippled by the time I'm 40. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen. And, and I, you know what? I'm, I'm cool with it. At this I'm point. cool with it. It's, yeah. it's kind of like, once uh, this, once this is over, I'm, I'm, starting to train again for wrestling yep. like it's yeah so that's me that's my story this is my back problems and uh, i hope you all enjoyed the podcast now okay that's funny well absolute pleasure i'm looking forward to seeing how the, how the I, prep uh, keeps going you know i appreciate it man um so yeah guys if you have any questions about prep or if you know you've been tossing around the idea of doing something like this feel free to reach out you can dm either me or david if you have any questions because i know david's done a show before i am dipping my toe in the water right now um and we would love to hear your questions Again, we always want questions. So if you have any questions when it comes to any episode of the podcast, feel free. Drop us we got some, some we got some really cool comments on the YouTube uh, questions and stuff like that lately. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll put together a little show on that. But guys, I appreciate you listening to this. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Like David said before, we're probably gonna have a couple more check-ins before the show. Keep you guys up to date about what's going on. Um, if you guys please, please, please share this with someone who you think will be inspired. Please rate the fucking podcast. Just rate it. All right. Don't even forget the review. Just leave the five stars. All right. That's all I want you to do. If you could do that, you're my best friend. And then I want you to go on to www.accountablelifegroup.com and I want you to click on the events tab. And you do this on Wednesday nights at 8 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 30 Pacific. And when you do that, you're going to go into the community call, which happens, like I said, every Wednesday night, 8 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Wednesday nights. It's and we free. vibe, baby. We vibe. We hang out. We shoot the shit. It's a fun time. So if you think that you want to be there, you should be there. Then after you do that, I want you to X out, open up a new tab, and I want you to go to www.amazon.com. Then I want you to look up the ALG Accountable Life Journal. I want you to cop one of those. Use it. It's great. We worked really hard on it, and word on the street is we're making a second one. Then hey, hey. after you do that, if you feel like you're in a situation where you want coaching, now, Listen to me. There's a lot of great coaches out there. A lot of my good friends are coaches. But if you're vibing with the shit that we're putting out there and you want to work with us, you go to www.algcoaching.com. And that's all you got to do. That's it. Damn straight. All right. And if you want to save 20% on redcon.com, you go to www.redcon1.com. You use promo code JARP. No, T20 JARP. I was on a roll there, baby. I was going. You can use promo code T20 JARP. That's T20. 
two zero J A R P S. Save twenty percent off your whole entire order, guys. I appreciate you listening to the podcast as always. Stay beautiful, stay sexy, stay accountable. Toodles, but I'm adding one last thing. I love the fact that before we started this podcast, you were hurting, <laughs> you were tired, I you was. were you were like, oh god, here we go. And then by the end of it, when you get the endorphins rolling, when you get down focus, it's like, boom, here we go, baby. See. You could you change your physiology, you change your focus, you change your language, yeah. and crazy where just energy just starts coming out of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, and Cyprus. Cyprus. David owes you two dollars. <laughs> Cyprus, we appreciate you. Shout out.